Hey guys, welcome back to yet another Python video. I don't even remember what number we're on at this point. I'm just uh, you know creating these for you guys one after another because this is awesome and it's something that I enjoy doing. And in this video, I want to go ahead and show you how to convert a object of one data type into a different data type. What the heck do I mean by that? Well, let's go ahead and dive in and I will make sure you understand that. So over here on my Python shell, what I'm going to do is show you why this is actually important. So what I'm going to do is create a string. So my string, and it's going to be equal to ninjas are cool, which is something we all already know. And if we do type, my string, we, you already know it's going to show that it's a string. And then if I do my num, then I set that equal to 256 because let's face it, that's an awesome number. I'll press enter. And then if we do type on that, we see, of course, it's an integer. So I have told you in the past how to add different things together. So I could do 457 plus my num and it equals 713. It just basically took the contents of my num and 457 added it together. So if I were to type my string plus and really awesome, what it's gonna do is concatenate the string. It's gonna take the string that is contained here in this variable and then it's going to also just print this. So you can see right here, it just went ahead and printed both statements side by side. But you can probably already see where I'm about to go with this. What happens if I do my num plus my string? We get an exception because we have two incompatible data types, unsupported operand for integer and string. We are trying to basically add an integer and a string together. And that is not something that we are able to do by default. Now, if they were of the same type, we could certainly do that. So if I was to take uh, my num and set it to a string of 256, and then I try to do it, it's actually going to work because both of those objects are the same type. Now they are strings. But that's actually not what I wanna show you. So what I'm gonna do is take the quotes out to change that back to an integer. And again, if I go ahead and add them, it's gonna fail. So what exactly do we do with this? How do we add an integer and a string? Or how do we change the data type to be something else? And a bigger question is, why do we even care? Because why not just always create the data types as compatible data types and we never need to worry about this? Well. I don't actually have a use case or an example to show you just yet. It's coming in a future video, but sometimes when you get a result from a, uh, some code, the result, you might need to grab that result and you need to add it to the result of another function. And maybe the way that the functions are written or the way that the code is written is not in a way where you can simply just um, export or, or have the results in the just so magically happen to be in the same format that you need them to be in, you might have to do some massaging. So I'm gonna show you basically right now how to convert that. So to recap, we have my num. So I'm gonna show you right now. And then we have my string. So we have these two data types and we wanna go ahead and add them together. So here's what I'm actually going to do. So to go ahead and show you how to convert this, I'm going to simplify the example quite a bit. So I'm just gonna change the variables around a bit. So I'm gonna do my num one equals 256. And then my num two equals 320. Now you can see right away, I have a string and an integer. I don't even need to use the typed function to show you that. And you already know that this is gonna fail if I do my num1 plus my num2, it can't be done. But here's what I can actually do to make this work. I can actually create a new variable, so my num1 int. I know that's probably not a proper or Pythonic naming scheme, but at this point, we're just learning. So, and then I'm gonna make it equals to int my num 
one, enter. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So we're gonna print my num one int. We see that it's 256. And if I go over here and do type, we see that it actually is an integer. Now my num one is a string, but what we did is we created a new actual variable called my num one int, and we made it equal to the contents. But what we actually did is we set it to integer by using this function right here. And we made the function equal to the contents of my num1. Essentially, we just took the contents of my num1 and we converted it to an integer. We stored the value here in my num1 int. So as you recall, we tried to do this and it failed, but now what we can do is we can just add my num1 int because that's what I called it, add it together, and you can see now that it actually works. Now, of course, we don't actually need to make a new variable. We could have simply just recreated my num1 and set it equal to the contents that my num1 already has, but in the int format. So if I press enter and I do type, we can see that now it actually is an integer. So that original uh, math problem that we tried to execute, my num1 plus my num2, which didn't work before, will work now. So we can, you know, you know, it's probably cleaner to just replace that variable completely with its new integer format version. Now, of course, what I also can do is I can convert this to a string, str, my num1, it's now a string, so now the variable name my num1 is very misleading, but you can see now that it is a string. So then what I can also do is make my num2 a string as well, and now what that's going to allow me to do, my num1 plus my num2, and it's just gonna put them side by side, so even though the name is now incorrect, it's not a num or number, it is a actual string, but you get the idea. It actually works just fine. We are able to now convert those over to a string, and now we're able to concatenate those. Now, what I could do, of course, is I could do my float equals float my num1, enter. It is a float. And you can see right now, it basically added the decimal where there wasn't one before. And as you recall, the presence of a decimal is what makes that a float. So you can see that we could simply change a type, object type to a completely different type, and that's very easy to do, especially with strings, integers, and floats. Now, of course, there's other uh, conversions we can do, but I think that's enough for this video. I don't want to make this too long and overwhelm you because the most important thing about learning a programming language is you just digest it in small chunks. Don't rush through and try to marathon all these videos. You basically just complete one every now and then. Try to commit into memory what you were taught in the video, and for bonus points, go online, and you could even find more examples of the same subject, but don't go overboard. You don't want to overload your brain. And then when you feel like you're comfortable with this, you're free to go ahead and move on to the next video. So as soon as I have that uploaded, I will see you there. Thank you so much for watching my video, guys. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, go ahead and check out my sponsor and my cloud server provider, Linode. Linode now features a new and improved dashboard, their cloud manager, that makes it an absolute breeze to set up your own Linux server. They even have Arch Linux. How cool is that? And of course, they have all the staples such as CentOS, Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, and more. And it's very easy to set up a server near you. In fact, Linode currently has nine worldwide data centers with two more set to appear this year in India and Canada. So definitely check them out, guys. I appreciate them as a sponsor. I appreciate you guys as a viewer. So thanks again for watching. Subscribe to my channel. I will have more content coming for you very soon. Stay tuned.